Hello and welcome to video 19 of this series. Uh, in the last episode we had a look at um, how to display uh, telemetry packets in the uh, in the graphical use interface and today we, we will do the same with logging. Sh should be quite easy. Uh, we have the foundations from last time so let's make it a quick one. So let's have a look. Um, how to do this? Um, basically the idea is we have um, this log function here in within Rio. And when we have a look um, in the Rio documentation, so we see that this data log func is a semigroup uh, and a monoid, so we can append more log functions together. And then uh, when, when a log, logging function is called a log debug, log warning, log error, or something like that, then this will get um, uh, logged with every one of these log functions. So how to, to, to create um, such a log function um, let's see, we have, uh, we have this function here, make log func. We give it a function which takes a call stack, a log source, a log level, uh, the UTF-8 builder uh, in IO, uh, and this creates a log function. And then we just append this together and uh, that should be it. So, um, looks quite easy. So uh, the thing is, we want to log in the display in the main window. And uh, so uh, let's go to the main window and let's just define such a function. So we just copy uh, the, the type signature. So we have in the main window, we have the, term, uh, the, the display from the other things, this create column and so on, set connected. Uh, just edit it at the bottom. So let's call this mvlog, um, which is a function like this. Um, basically, we had the, the thing that we needed in I.O. And um, of course, what we have to, to pass in is like in, in the other things we have to pass in the main window because we need to access the, the graphical stuff. So, uh, and for now, uh, uh, let's call. Uh, maybe we don't won't use all the the things. So the call stack logs us log level builder, and now we just create a dummy function. Unused matches, yes, and uh, just export it. Mw log. Okay. And um, yeah, this one is not used. And then we just go here. And so um, we have this with log function from Rio. This function uh, generates a log function. The standard is to, to put it normally to standard out, so to the terminal. And then we pass it simply here. So uh, what we just do is we create a, a GUI log func, which is this uh, make log func from Rio. Make log func uh, and uh, we pass in the mw log and also what we have to pass in of course is a into the closure is the main window. So we have the GUI log func and then what we, what we do here is just with this log func and then we append the GUI log func. And that should log to the to the graphical user interface. So of course we have now to specify what the graphical user interface, what this function should do. But this is everything that has to be done on the high level for the for getting the logging to the to the window. So okay, so let's have a look. The one thing uh, I forgot. Sorry about that. So in Glade we we have uh, already defined this. Uh, okay, this looks a little bit strange because the paint is. Yes, so uh, for some reason, don't know why. Uh, so what we need is this tree view name, the tree view log messages. So let's let's copy that. We go here and um, of course we have to, to retrieve it. So let's call this just log disp and just put the name in here and this is a tree view. And of course, we should also store this here. 
and I will lock this, which is also a tree view. And then, of course, we need also a model. So, a uh, main window, uh, this uh, lock model, uh, and this is a six door. And so, what we want to use, we want to lock the timestamp, the lock level, and the message itself. All other stuff should go only to the terminal. So let's just create um, a data structure for this. And uh, let's just define this data log message. And we have a UTC, UTC time, a log, log level, and a text right let's make this also strict so that we and UTC time okay so we need to import data time clock okay yeah and now we need of course to to uh, put this also into effect here so um, we need to set the fields mw lock this is then the tree view and the model is created we need also some init function so uh, the lock model is then init lock display uh, and we pass it the lock display tree view and we say in the lock model is then this lock model right and then we need this init function of course um, so we have here the init packet display and i think we will just make this very very similar this is a monad iom tree view and it gives us a seek star lock message And for now, let's just copy this. Right. So we create a new six store and empty one. That's right. Then we set this model, the, 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 the model attribute of the tree view. And then we need to create columns. So one is the time. Then we have now the log level, which should be let's say 80 pixels, something like that. Uh, and then we need, um, so we have time address, so we will just copy that from the other. Um, so, uh, and here we have the level attributes, uh, and then we have the message itself. Let's do uh, arbitrary number now, 800 and Let's also give this some attributes. The other ones we don't need. We only have these three entries and that should be okay. So what do we have for the time address here? We just pack show, okay. Uh, we can use that. Uh, where? And uh, we don't get a team packet. We get a log message. Uh, Timestamp is T, and we ignore the other arguments. And we don't have a case, we, we don't have a maybe here, so we just have this one. Text is T pack show. Okay, yeah, for now. Uh, actually, we should then do something which is quicker and um, for, for, for a more real system, but for now it's okay. Uh, then let's look at the level. So, um, how should we display the, the, the level address? Okay, we get the log message again. We ignore the timestamp and then we have the levels. Um, log message, sorry. Uh, what did I do? This is complete bonkers. <laughs> uh, sorry for that. Uh, it's too early. So. Um, 
Okay, yeah. Again, we get a log message and then we should, uh, so, so that the signature would be the same. And we get a log message, we ignore the timestamp and then we have level debug and we ignore the third parameter, the message itself. And then we need um, to set the text and we need to set the colors somehow. Did we have this with the colors? Yes. So we need to do something like that. So actually, um, um, uh, let's let's also cheat a little bit here. So let's make it like this. So we, we set the text to debug. This is the, the level. And then we set the colors. And for the colors, uh, I don't want to program this out. This is a little bit stupid. So. We have a color function which takes a log level, uh, a log message, sorry, not a log level. Ah, yeah, a log level, right. Yeah, we, we pass the level debug here. And then it sets the background uh, colors to, for, for debug, there is no, no thing for info. We set it to green, the foreground, the, the background to green, the foreground to black. So the, the font is black and the, the cell itself is green. Then for a warning, we set it to yellow and for a level, uh, for an error, we set it to red and for other, we set it also to red. Um, and yes, so basically, uh, we can now just copy that for the other levels. So we have level debug, we have level warn, we have level error and we have level other. And there is some text like X, I think, with level. Then we don't have this one. And um, so this is warning. This is an error. And this is actually, this should then be X. Right? Uh, yeah, text out was still missing. And of course, this need to be warning because the colors need to match. Uh, level other x. Let's do it like that. Or maybe that's better. Okay, and then the message itself should be quite easy. We just uh, we get here. What what do we get here? We have a text. Yeah, that's that's easy. So I, th we can do it directly. So we get a, a, a log message timestamp something in the message and then we just say text uh, we set the text property to the message okay uh, so we have a, a compile error uh, uh, yeah we can be okay yeah we need to return the model Right. Compiles defined but not used. Ah, pattern matching not, not exhaustive. Okay, what what do we have? Oh, the info level, of course. Yeah. Uh, the info level. With debug, then we have the info. Info. Info level. Right. Good. So let's go to this log function. So we need to, with this log functions now, oh, okay. This log function needs to propagate the, the this display with the message. Um, so again, we have the call stack, the log source, which we ignore for now. Uh, we could actually use them, but um, maybe later. And then the thing is for the log level, um, for the graphical user interface, I don't want to display debug messages. We could also make this settable so that you can set a log level where the messages are displayed. But for now, let's hard code this. So uh, what we have is level info. From level info upwards, we will we will do the same and uh, call and of course the the message. Yeah, and then what we will do is we call this post GUIA post GUI async and then we call um, a function do log GUI 
level info and message. Yes. And so we do this for warning, error, and other. Warn, error. There's also other possibilities. We uh, okay. It's not really an enum because uh, this is uh, this level other has an additional parameter. So um, yeah, this is a little bit dirty, but it's okay for now. So we just pattern match on this level, and then pass it to a do log. And the do log itself, let's just copy the type signature, and then we just can ignore the call stack and the log source. And this is now called um, so yeah, this is called do log. And this one is actually already thread safe because we have called it within this post GUI async. So we have a GUI, we have the level and we have the message. And what do we do? Again, um, we want to display a certain number of log messages. Uh, the most actual is on top. And uh, then we, if, we, if we have a certain number reached, then um, it should not get more messages. So the next message is added and the last one is deleted so that we have always the same number and that we don't blow up the, the tree view. So um, the nasty thing with logging in Rio is that you don't get a timestamp. So we have to do this ourselves. And this means that the timestamp in the standard out terminal and the GUI will be slightly different. So this is a little bit annoying, but okay. So we get the get current time. Uh, do we have this function get current time? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, this is from, from the time library. And then we need to create a message. Uh, so I let a log message this data type we just defined. So we get the, the current timestamp, we get the level, and then we get the, we, we have to convert this is this UTF-8 builder to a text. And this is simple. There's a function UTF-8 builder to text and message, right? Uh, and then let's also how many messages we want to display, let's say 200 maximum. And then, um, okay, so we need to get this the, the, the number of messages already in the log and then compare this. So n is uh, six or get size from the model. And the model is, um, let's also factor it out. The model is then the MW display uh, log model GUI, right? So we have the number. And if the, when we have the case that n is greater than the log size, this 200, this 200 messages, then we have to remove the last one. So uh, what do we do? We sig store remove uh, from this sig store model. Uh, and the last one is the size minus one. Yeah, so this is indexing again, zero based index, don't forget it. And uh, also we do a six store uh, prepend. We want to put it on top and not at the bottom. So we prepend with the model and the message, right? Uh, the log message. So we add this log message to the six store, right? And the one thing, additional thing we should also do is because the, it will simply scroll down. So what we want is to want, we want to, to always display the first line. So if it scrolls down, we need to jump up again to the first line. And this can be done with the tree view scroll to cell function. So we give this the log MW log this the tree view itself from the GUI, right? We give it a, an index. Yeah, we need to pass it an index, an index into this. So we have to specify the row. This is the tree path new from indices. And we give it a list of integers and the index is zero. So the first line. So just this row. 
uh, then uh, we need don't need to specify the column. And since this is polymorphic, we need to specify a type. Uh, and then false zero zero zero. They are not that interesting. These parameters save that should compile hopefully. No. Variable not in scope. Post GUI async. Right. We need to import. Right. Pattern matches are not exhaustive. Uh, yes, sorry, yeah, of course. And for the other things, uh, for, for every other level, so no matter what we pass in here, we just don't do anything. We just ignore them. And we're good. So, uh, let's run it. Oh, we need to add time. Yes, uh, two. Don't we have it? No, we don't have it. Okay. That's right. Okay, compiles. And as you remember, we, we well, at startup we don't have a as we have this, haven't set the server up, we don't have a connection. So we should already get some yeah, and we have logging messages. Could not connect, reconnecting, warning, could not connect, reconnecting, could not connect, reconnecting. And now it should be always the the first line should always be visible, even if it scrolls out of the range. Time is visible, level is visible, we can resize it if you want to. Great! Logging with the GUI works. This is the goal for this episode. Thanks for watching. Have a great time.